This is an ICP in the clear room. It has a load lock and an operator station. The rest of the tool is hidden in the service area and you don't need to think about that. To load a wafer, you go to the user software, press the manual button and the transport tab. Currently the load lock is under vacuum, so we press the load button. The load button will automatically put the load lock to atmosphere. Uh, the lid will pop up automatically, so it's not a good idea to put your wafers on top of the lid. As the pressure in the load lock increases, the O-ring that seals the opening between the lid and the, the load lock will force the lid to open, and you can see that. No. Once the lid is open, you can place your wafers. It's important that the flat of the wafer is always positioned towards the center of the carousel. In the software, it is indicated this indicator will inform you that when you pre close the lid, it will automatically pump down and map. The carousel spins around and there's a sensor that sits down here that will detect whether there's a wafer present or not in the slots. The wafer is indicated in the software like this and is given an ID. It takes a while. The base pressure in the load lock is 80 millitor. So when it reaches that pressure, the transfer is complete. The process is complete and we are ready to take the dummy wafer out of the load lock and replace it with the wafer. To do that, you press on the wafer you want to move and you click on the destination. That makes a valid transfer. Now we can transfer our wafer from the load lock. I click here and then there. Transfer from carousel slot 2 to ICP1 chamber. And we're ready to go. On the AOE and the ASE, the first thing that you do when you come to the tool is to change the temperature to the correct electrode temperature. It takes a certain time to stabilize and you can benefit from the time when it's stabilizing to load and unload wafers from the load lock. To change the set point, you go to the controller, you press temp, 
Now I want to process at zero degrees, so I press zero to change the set point and enter ENT. This changes the set point and the, uh, the, the chiller circuit will start to stabilize. It's important to remember that uh, you cannot process while it's stabilizing. If you start a process with a set point that is uh, different from the, uh, from the temperature, the tool will come up with alarms. When your processes are complete, you need to return the chiller to the de default temperature. To do that, you do the, the same thing. You press temp. and enter. This is Pegasus 1. It has a very nice feature, the cassette loader. As with the other ICPs, it has an, a load lock and an operator computer. The cassette loader has a has the possibility of having a 6-inch wafer cassette or a 4-inch wafer cassette. It allows us to operate or to process a whole batch of wafers uh, without attending the computer. In addition to the operator station, you have a, an office PC that enables you to log on and log off a lab manager and to fill in the process log. And there's also an endpoint detection system that is operated on this computer. To load wafers to the cassette loader, you take out the cassette. transfer the wafers to the dedicated cassette. You should only use this black cassette for, uh, for the cassette loader. As with the other ICPs, it's important that the flat is always pointed in the right direction, so we have to align the flats on this one. The cassette is put in the way, in such a way that the the ends of the box of the cassette is is aligned to to this. So goes down like this. And when you put the cassette down, always make sure that it sits right. Close the doors. Go to the transport tab and press map cassette 2. In the software on the manual and transport page, 
all the wafers pop up at cassette 2. From here they may be processed either using batch processes, that means automated runs of a whole batch of wafers with process recipes, or you can choose to load them manually by clicking 